Hello, Whatever. welcome back to. <laughs> Hello, the prospectus. <laughs> Hello, folks. Welcome to the prospectus room. I'm your bartender. Let's get right into the news. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we're just gonna be going for all the DLC from, uh, Fallout 3 to New Vegas to 4, except for all the workshop shit, because that's an app, in case you're wondering, or thought, it's just an app. Um, came out broken and buggy. Terrible. For what it was, even if it came out fine, it would probably still be an app. Um, anyway, yeah, let's start off with, uh, Fallout 3's first DLC, Broken Steel. Where do we feel like putting it? Wait, that, no, that's the last DLC. Is it? I looked it up in release. Are you sure? Really? Uh, I think Broken Steel was the first DLC. I thought Broken Steel. I looked was up first. downloadable content in order, so apparently the computers is not working there, Chief. I, I'm just going off of memory. Damn it! Where's the list, Bethesda? <laughs> <laughs> hey, fuck it, fine. Look, we're doing Broken Steel first anyway, and then we'll do Anchorage. I guess it's long. No, no, it's wrong. No, 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 no. Wait, no way. It's not a computer wrong. Broken Steel. Switch broken to assist. Ignore me. Alright, GG. Alright, so where do we feel like putting Broken Steel at? So, act, so, so I, I told you before we started that I had like a, a semi-controversial take. I think Broken Steel mm -hmm. is either low S or high A tier. Really? Like, yeah, I do. All right, All right go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is going to be controversial to you, Sparks. I was going to say it's like D. Yeah, I, that's why I said that's why I said my take was controversial because I know a lot of people don't like Broken Steel, but I actually think it. I, bro, broken Steel is fine. It just seems very um. What's the word? I guess tacked on. I think it's the opposite. I think it completes Fallout 3. Like, the game is not complete unless you finish Broken Steel, in my in my opinion. Like, it's main, it's the main story. Like the true but, ending but, kind of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's it, the it's, thing. It's like, how, it's like if you played Mass Effect 3 when it came out versus when they came out with the DLC that fixed it, fixed mm -hmm. the ending. Like, that's what Broken Steel is for Fallout 3. It actually just finishes the story. It adds in, like, pretty mediocre side content but it's you're, you're playing it for the opportunity to spoilers you know gain access to an orbital satellite that just destroyed liberty prime and then you want to destroy either the citadel or you know the mobile base crawler okay wow just an orbital actual... satellite that could destroy your enemies in just one click yep. what does that sound like new vegas ripped it off yep I mean, but they, they're like, <laughs> guys, think of it this way. Also, think of it within the context of when the game came out. You know, there aren't very impressive. many other uh, open world games on the market, like, at all. And especially not one where the concept of, like, cinematically, like, you know, experiencing, you know, a doomsday, like, laser cannon, essentially. Just destroying something. Mine's that just was the train. I just thought the train looked I mean, cool. that's... That was very novel. Like, you know, think of it this way. At the same time that this is coming out, you know, Call of Duty is the, the most, you know, cinematic game out there. And it's pretty yeah. cool that you have, like, the AC-130 and stuff, but it doesn't really, like, get to the same level of spectacle as what Fallout 3 did. Well, the thing is with um, the Broken Still DLC, one, I stand by it. I actually want to rank it as B, and the only reason for that, if I want to be straight with you, is because it has a train that moves. I know that sounds stupid, and that's because it is. But, like, it, for the for like present game time to have a train move like that, not very impressive. To have it move in that engine like that, very fucking impressive. And it's like something you like, you know, like you would actually remember. You remember the train. Uh, that it all hinges on the train for me. So that's all I have. You know what? I will. I will settle because you all seem to have much more of a deep understanding of broken steel than I do. So I suggest that we just meet in the middle and and move it to B. Yeah, I'm okay. With okay, that. so no B problem. for broken steel. B, B for, for broken, broken steel. steel. Now the next one. Operation Anchorage. Operation Anchorage. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, I'll start it off. I think it's a C. You think it's a C? Yeah. Well, okay. Here's the thing. I want to say C, but if I'm gonna put up, if I'm gonna put Broken Steel at B, 
I feel like Operation Anchored should be up there, but uh, I'll settle for C. I'll settle for C in my opinion. It is basically, you know, just it's a, it's a military simulation, but it does bring you to a different world's place, uh, finding new enemies, uh, introducing very video game mechanics on purpose, like the little health stations and whatnot. Plus, it's and a, at the end of the it's day, a it's a deep lore. It's a yeah. really, it's like super deep lore for Fallout. So I, I was gonna put it at a B, of course, in this list that's like next to Broken Steel, but I put, like I said, I put my Broken Steel at like S A. But I, I, think right. I, put, I think I put Operation Anchorage at B. Um, uh, you're baby. So, uh, let Met Melody is finished and I'll finish. I thought he was, oh, sorry, go ahead, man. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, I, I have nothing else to add. It's just, it's it's a solid thing, adds deep lore. It's it's okay gameplay-wise. It's not as good as, uh, you know, Broken Steel, for example, but, like, it's it, it's engaging, and it's and it's short. It doesn't last too long. Okay. Cool reward at the end. Yeah, you do get a nice reward. And I will say, you do, it does... Uh, when you read the notes about how it's made after you finish the DLC, spoilers for a DLC for a game that came out quite a long time ago. I can't think 15 of the years. Either. Yeah, you find out that it's not historically accurate at all to what happened. It's just general cheese exaggerating the entire time. <laughs> so very straightforward. It is just outcasts need you. They stuff you in a chamber and bada bing bada boom, you're doing a military program. And spider drones. I need to get to like make our oh, teams. Yeah, I'll move it to B. You guys comfortable with B? Yeah, I, I, like B. I said, I I thought it was a B. Yeah, I've got no problem with that. All right, for the next one, uh, let's go for the pit. The pit. Uh, I go I put now. the pit at B. B? Okay. Yeah. Um, mine is actually uh, <laughs> I put mine at A. All right. Well, why did you put it at A, Sean? Because one, it's like I love the environment of it. Um. I, I, you can tell like the people who actually made the map for the pit put like a lot of I mean you can say it for any of the DLC but like they put a lot of love into the atmosphere of it um I the one thing I like about the pit the most is uh not necessarily the story but the uh, morally gray choice that you can make for either direction and in Fallout 3 you don't get that too much so like I like the idea of you know um, leave the baby there, they'll make an antidote at some point. In the long run, maybe the better decision, but who knows? Or take the baby, risk losing this research, and give it to Werner, and then yada yada. Um, I mean, obviously I still think giving it to Warner is the right decision, but at the same point, there's enough room to like kind of lean an argument either way in my opinion and again the atmosphere i like the trogs even if they're you know basically just ghouls but i still fuck with them i can respect it the, the reason why i put it at b the same rating as operation anchorage is because i i kind of consider operation anchorage and um the pit both kind of like hyper glorified side quests you know like in fallout 3 every side quest is basically like completely separated from the rest of the map it's its own thing that's basically the pit. That's basically Operation Anchorage. Uh, I thought it was a good story. You know, like you said, it's got that little... Uh, not not too often in Fallout, you get uh, Fallout 3, you get those uh, gray choices, you know, mm -hmm. middle of the ground things. I mean, there's Tenpenny Tower, but that's pretty much like the only one I could think of. Um, that one's just, just so yeah, yeah, evil I, one way or the other. That's why I put it at B. I don't think it's like so special like maybe broken steel was to me or maybe like another like the next thing that we're going to talk about but yeah it's good i give it a b i don't think it's bad i think it's a, a, definitely a fun experience what about you mammoth you know i'm trying to think of my thoughts for it but every time i try to think of uh the pit mm -hmm. my brain shorts out i can't remember the pit uh the pit was ba do you remember do you want me to give you like a brief like eight second Thing, like synopsis of the story. You can try, son, but I, I, it feels like, you know, when you're trying to start your car and it just ain't working, you're turning the key, you're trying, yeah. you're trying, it just ain't going. Well, I guess. What's going on? Here's basically what, what happens. A guy named Warner needs your help getting a bunch of slaves out of a, like, a metal factory kind of thing. You go down to the pit, you become, like, a slave, you have to go get iron ignits, you come back, fight in the arena, go up, talk to Asher, then you have to decide whether to bring the baby back to Warner, 
or leave the baby there in hopes of making like a cure. a cure i think you also get a chance to make a cure if like it's with warner i just think it's less likely i'm not necessarily sure if that's applied or just heck yeah if you haven't played the pit but you've played fallout 4 i think of the pit as like a combination between the the vaults 81 storyline and the uh, the saugus ironworks like atmosphere <laughs> I would give it a bit I more just of a Tron kind of thing. Yeah. I remember doing it, but I can't remember anything about it. it it's it's just it's a side quest. Like I said, it's a glorified side quest. Um, I give I it. No, but I'm usually so good at this. Like I can remember all the side quests from Fallout Four in New Vegas. He was Fallout Three, but this is well kind of weird. It's because it kind of drags on for a while. Like unlike Operation Anchorage, which is like short and sweet, uh, the pit kind of like. It, implores you to like explore the whole like you know mini map what is option and it's not and it's not an interesting area it's it's really not that interesting an area i like, like have you ever got all the stealing gets yeah, yeah i got all yeah them. but got think about it you have to go all the way to the top it, it's my opinion it's more of like a horror simulator like when you have to, like it also rewards like different skill classes like think about it you know when um you first like you know go into the ironworks thing you make a right and there's like a bunch of like you know uh protectrons like there and you can boot them up if like you have a high enough science like i mean that's like, cool. they, they, but they, they that's like par for the course in fallout 3 it's like hey do you have high science you could do this side quest in a slightly different way how like think about how much that actually helps so like you know you have like a bunch of drugs attacking you especially if you're low level and like if you have like a science like low strength or endurance kind of class then oh, like, okay, well, let, let me ask you this then. How would you feel if uh, Dead Money was only the first half? Like, that's basically the pit's atmosphere. Well, yeah, no, I'm not going to lie to you. The atmosphere is kind of samey, but it also depends on this, which is why I feel like if Mammoth remembered it, he'd probably rank it at a C. Um, some of my favorite areas in uh, the pit are actually where you collect all the steel ingots, it's uh, like near the end game where you have to like go through like you know these tunnels and there's drugs everywhere and you're on edge and like you know you have to like do these things i don't know it feels more like of a horror game and like that sense especially depending on your equipment i don't know it really comes up to mammoth to be honest because i but still think thing, if i can't remember the dlc i can, i remember doing it i just can't remember anything about it doesn't that mean i have to if it's that forgettable in my brain <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean that I should low, read it as low as possible, or should I just I mean, avoid voting because I don't remember it? And no, I should... no, no, no. It, it, if it left, like I said, it's not a very like impressionable experience. It's unlike uh, unlike Anchorage. Like I said, I keep making the comparison to how their side quests, mm -hmm. which has that short and sweet. It's like a nice, quick thing that you remember. It's like quirky. The pit is just like here's like the the like a generic side quest in Fallout Three, but we expanded it into a DLC, and you know that's it. I'll put it at B uh, then, right. but if you're gonna put it below Anchorage, which I mean, yeah, the only thing that's really driving it for me to like be at um like A, it, the, well, no, A. The only reason why I want to put it at A is because of that choice that it gives you at the end. If I'm gonna be 100 percent honest. But I think that's fair. I'm willing to put it at B. Uh, currently. Like, like they could just take any other side quest in Fallout Three. I was just thinking about it. Like, take the <laughs> Agatha quest with the Stratus Varius, uh, the violin, and just switch it out for the pit. You know. Okay, that quest is fucking sick. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, just take that quest. Take any quest. Take the Ten Penny quest. Take the the Paradise Falls quest, and then just replace it with the pit. You know, give it its own area. It's basically the same thing. Also, by the way, uh, look at real quick when I put it in B. Look at the picture that they chose for the pit. Broken steel. Operation Anchorage. The pit. And then I just the Fallout Three logo. Yes. Just the pit. Yeah, they just put the pit. <laughs> no, no, yeah, the pit is just the Fallout Three logo, yeah. just where it's the pit on it. At least with the Brotherhood of Steel one, it's zoomed out. Is that supposed to be the BOS logo in the background? Now, mm. now point lookout. I am definitely putting. I am going to put that in S for atmosphere alone. Uh, I put it in uh, same thing with broken steel. I put it in S minus or A, A plus. I'm going to put it in A actually. I'll put it in A. My, uh, I think I'll it. agree with A. Uh, yeah. Now normally I don't like you know 
dark green, but it is interesting to explore the swamp as a swamp man myself. Thank you, Jared. Sort of like coming back home. Uh, the, the, see, the thing that makes it better for me than the other uh, two that I ranked at B is unlike the other two, which are basically just like a glorified side mission, Point Lookout has three or four or even five, depending on how you want to want to look at it, glorified side missions. That one's so, cool, though, yeah. isn't it? The Chinese one, like where you have to like... That's what I'm saying, yeah. There's I the like Chinese sub. There's the main quest line with Calvin and the Brain. There's the tribal stuff. There's the, uh, the, the tie-in back to the Dunwich building. Wait, and then there's just, this is a tribal and then there's just like the general uh i forget what they're called but like you know the the, the hillbilly trash mutants oh, wait isn't that in the main quest too or don't you trash have to go through the tribal stuff. stuff just to yeah yeah you do it's main quest you have to go through the tribal stuff just to get to uh like, yeah to yeah see. yeah but but it you feels get to go on a drug you know? it, does. it feels different you know you're playing operation anchorage every quest is fight the chinese like simulation you know all right, I'm getting worried now because I'm afraid we're just gonna put all the DLCs. On I'm, this putting it a. I'm putting it in A. All right, all right, but I'm just, in my I'm opinion. just worried. In my opinion, sorry. in your opinion, I'm just worried that we're being too liberal of our opinion to the point where there's not going to be a single DLC below C at most. Uh, it's two oh, out no, of three I think majority. Fallout Four DLC. I think the I I think we'll Fallout get there, man. Generally, stick it back on. I know. I'm just worried that we're gonna be too positive. Oh, don't worry, we're not. Well, I mean, think of it this way. B means it's like, uh, I think of it this way. Think of B as in it's about the same level as the game. A is better than the base game, and S is, like, absolutely, like, the best part of the base game. I you know? put out a and then C is like, And then C is, like, a little bit worse than the base game stuff. D is, like, even worse. Then F is just, like, they should not have released this. Yeah. All right. Are we cool with a point lookout for A, though, or no? Sure, yeah. sure. Okay, yeah, I like sure. Swamp. Put up Swamp for Arbor up there, you know. Swamp, yeah, pretty. Well, yeah, but I like this. Oh, we'll get to that. Anyway. I know, I know. I'm just saying it's... Mother Sith Zeta. I put Zeta at uh, at D, honestly. Like, I, I just okay. don't like it. All right, Mammoth? Uh, it's not quite F. Like, oh, sorry. I, I'm glad they did it because it's a little bit different, you know, the aesthetic of and, it. And, and there's some novelty to it, the loot. but there's it, there's no story. The loot's not fun. Everything is just like the blandest gray. There's no one to talk to, basically. You don't like the loot? I like the loot. Nah. Get a fucking katana. Alright, alright. Nah, man. I'm gonna say this. It's just... Finish your fun melody. Just, I don't like it. I put it at D. Okay. I put it at D. Now then, of course, it's pretty horrible, but it is, it is safe. By us. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something completely stupid because I want to bring this up because no one's brought this up in literally a decade. All right, are you ready? Uh huh. One mothership data didn't they have a hollow tape they had to remove because it's it talks about how the aliens started the Great War. Uh, I th see. Like I, I don't know if that's true. I th I also remember reading like I don't know if this is like a fan theory that Vault Tech started the Great War. So uh, that's because in New Vegas there's an atom bomb that you can find that has the Vault Tech logo on it. Ah, okay. It, it's really ambiguous. You don't know if Vault Tech dropped the bombs first, or maybe they just helped it so that there's a reason for them. It's its own thing. But I'm gonna say this: my, if, something that hasn't been mentioned in a decade. Mm -hmm. Mothership Zeta is pretty much a one and done deal, completely forgettable. Unless, all right, unless I'm, I'm, I'm pausing for dramatic effect. All right, <laughs> as all the great orators do. All right, unless you have the mod. Uh, I'm forgetting the mod. I'm forgetting uh, the mod. Mothership Zeta crew. Zeta, Mothership Zeta crew. Mothership Zeta crew. Ah. That, this is probably the dumbest thing I'm going to bring up. No, it's good. Good mod. And I, I bring it up because no, no one remembers this. But it's a mod where you get a bunch of onk. So you so you finish Fallen for you finish uh, uh, the alien and whatnot. This is just a tangent. I'm doing a tangent. No, no, you're good. Uh, and you get the enclave, all right? And then you decide to break you they want to redeem themselves so you get these uh, enclave uh you know traders and you bring them up to the spaceship and you form your own uh your own faction based out of the old alien spaceship and you get to do crazy stuff like go to the moon go to an underwater base and visit the soviet union it's so cool <laughs> 
and it's so stupid. It is beautiful. The reason, the fact that that mod exists, is why this mod should, is why this DLC should be at least a C. I'll give it C. I I, I also agree with C. Uh, mine is purely for aesthetic. Is why I want it C. Also, I love the alien blaster and all that other shit. Um, Mel, are you willing to move it to C? Uh, I mean, it's. I mean, like, no, I think it's a D, but it's it's an average of what we say, so, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's perfect, it's... C. Yeah. Saying, <laughs> I, I just said it's S tier, we get to move it to B? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, well, yeah, actually, that's what we would have had to have done. All right, now we're moving on to the fan favorite, Fallout New Vegas, and we're starting off with Dead Money. Um, I'd like to give my thoughts on it. I want to move that bitch up to S, but it's uh, your guys' school. Yeah. Uh, I, I think Dead Money, I think Dead Money is, um, I think it's A tier. Okay. Uh, I don't hear, I, I, I really don't think it's S tier. I think it's honestly like on the cusp of being B, but it's definitely better than, um, uh, The Pit and, uh, and Operation Anchorage. So I, I put it in A still. Okay. Also, I gotta do something real quick. One second. Mammoth, what's your thoughts on it? Dead Money, first time I played through, I was having a horrible time because it is, of course, Dead Money. Uh, yeah. But then I played through it a couple more times. Then I found a guide about how to get all the caches and weapons, and I played through it again. And uh, when I wasn't, you know, piss, uh, you know, you know, pissing myself, <laughs> uh, I began to really enjoy it. And all its compacted stories and its loop arounds and all the things they can do. I, you know, you, you have to suck up to Dean in order to get his good ending, which I didn't know after two or three times. Uh, it's, it, it is very interesting. That it's, it's, it's a unique atmosphere to the rest of, I'd say most of uh, Fallout, to all Fallout New Vegas. Not, a, not as unique as Fallout 3, because Fallout 3 is very, oh, it's de derelict ruins, danger, and it's dark, and it's spooky. Yeah. But it, it is something unique when compared to the rest of New Vegas, where it's wacky adventures and Survival. open desert. Yeah. Um, what do you place that then, Mammoth? I would say it is... I'm going to say A. Hey, yeah. right. Hey, let's do it. I am going to just go ahead and do that. Um, next one. Honest Farts. Where are we putting uh it? It's pronounced farts. Actually, Josh Sawyer clarified that it said farts in a uh, oh, live right, play well, for a fun fact. Then I'm going to have to knock it up one to S. No. Uh, S. I think farts to me is like dead money. It's like not quite B, um, but it's not like close to S. It's like low A, high B. Honestly, I guess, I, I, I guess like for my ratings in my head, which, mm -hmm. you know, for averaging, I guess I would knock everything down by one, just so that I could fit uh, Dead Money and Honest Hearts in B, below um, below uh, Point Lookout so far, and then I'll just put everything else down one because I, I do think they're low A tier. They're definitely not as good as uh, Point Lookout, but they're definitely better than both Operation Anchorage and The Pit. Well, I mean, you also have we the thing. Like like, you see how like we're right? doing this order thing, like boom, boom. <laughs> see. Yeah, like I was about to say, let's just arrange it by, you know, best on the less, uh, on the left, uh, worst on the right. All right, so. yeah. If we're gonna do it that way, I would. Uh, if we're gonna, if we're gonna do that now, I would say put Point Lookout uh, to the left of Dead Money. I think Point Lookout is better than Dead Money. Uh, well, here's the thing. I I am very biased, as as you guys know. I fucking love Dead Money. I would honestly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know this is gonna hurt. I'd honestly put it above all the Fallout 3 DLC. I I mean, it's all subjective. People like different things. I just really fucking love Dead Money. Uh, Honest Tart, so, like, it, it's either high B or low A. The thing with yeah, Honest Hearts that carries it, in my opinion, is Randall. Like, that's the main thing that makes me rank it so highly. The story of Randall. Yeah. Uh, I think that Broken Steel is actually better than uh, Honest Hearts. Really? Barely, but like I said, Fallout 3, it literally just gets completed by Broken Steel. I think on their own, if you don't, con if you like, if you never like played Fallout 3 or New Vegas, but like you just played Honest Hearts and Broken Steel, 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, Honest Hearts is a better DLC. But if you play through all of Fallout 3 and all of New Vegas, and then you get to do Honest Hearts, and then you get to do Broken Steel, Broken Steel is more essential. It's more critical to, to, to the story, and it feels better. Well, yeah, no, I agree. Uh, with you. But, but not by much. Well, no, I agree with you, because what you're saying is, like, it completes... It completes the story to where out of all the DLC for Fallout New Vegas, it has the least to do with the main story out of all of them. Right? Well, that's what I'm saying. It still has to do with the main story. That's why I still put on the chart so high. I just think Broken Steel is a little bit better. Like, Joshua Graham, he's, you know, he's the Legion connection that you don't really get in the Fallout New Vegas story because the Legion is so underdeveloped. So, on the charts does do a lot for the story. It's just that Broken Steel does a bit more for the story, and that makes up for the fact that Honest Hearts is pretty interesting i think zion valley is a pretty interesting place it's a little bit more interesting than adam's air force base so i'm willing to put it in b but if i'm gonna put it in b i would like to put it in front of broken steel personally yeah i mean like dude it's it's the average of all of our opinions so because mammoth thinks broken steel is pretty low it would make sense to put honest hearts above broken steel well what do you think mammoth where do you want to put honest hearts well honest hearts with most DLC, it seems more like a mission that you're being sent on. You know, with uh, dead money, you're literally exploring and then you get forced onto a bank heist. Uh, with the later ones down the line, it is sort of more essential. With on the way Honest Heart starts and the way you play for it, it feels more like the courier going on vacation. It is the wacky road trip movie of DLC. If I had to come up with a term for it, it is a camping trip. Mm. I've always viewed it as a camping trip. And sure, the area is beautiful, and the, the story there is interesting. It, it is just there. You're you're mostly just there for the scenery. Yeah. So I, so I will say that it is a B, and it is behind Broken Steel for the simple fact that although Joshua and Daniel, the story of Randall. You get to meet two bears high-fiving, and you get to explore the beauty of Zion National Park. It's still just a camping trip. You Wait, go hunting. So oh, sorry, I have a question for you. So have you changed your mind on Broken Steel, then? Uh, I believe Broken Steel should be where it is. Uh, but I also believe that the way that it's... <laughs> get it up there! I believe that the way we're setting it up, if I were to take the information we do, Broken Steel is... In your guys' opinion, important to the story. I think the story with Fallen Free ends up with you killing yourself in the chamber, and yeah. they just change that with the DLC because people want to play afterwards. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like it's like the story's over, but we forgot something. That's what Broken Steel, uh, Broken Steel feels for me. Oh yeah, your tale is at an end, Wanderer. Oh yeah, by the one more thing. Then you wake up in a bed two weeks later. <laughs> two weeks later. <laughs> All right, so now um, I actually agree with that. I can see that. Um, I think now we have old world blues, and I'm I will willing to change, but I am S. I think S. I'm, I, I'm I don't biased. think I don't, I don't think I'm, there's any discussion. It is I think by far, even even for the ones that we haven't talked about yet, like this is by far the best DLC for Fallout. It is peak Fallout. It is. I am completely biased, so you should take everything I say. As it is heard, all right, I'm 100% factual on this. Oro Blues is the greatest retirement plan for any video game protagonist. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Look at what you get. That's your reward for scaling this B-movie horror show with tongue-in-cheek comedy, this absolute disgusting feel the tired gone too far. Once you've conquered it and tamed it and bend it to your will, it becomes your retirement home. And I think that's pretty neat, though. Oh, yeah. All right, then, and yeah. I don't know. I always get goosebumps when I listen to the Old World Blues ending. I feel like oh, it's, God. like, so, you know, po poignant, poignant, whatever. I want to use that word. It's, like, really meaningful. It just makes me smile. I don't know. It just makes yeah. me smile. I love it. All right, so now we are on to Lonesome Road, and... I don't know how the fuck I feel about it, to be 100% honest. I, I love it, but I also am indifferent. But I'll let you guys go first. Do you mind if I go? Because I can kind yeah. of build off what I just said for Old World Blues for this. Like, I feel like Lonesome Road is, like, someone 
had a really thought that the ending of Old World Blues was cool with how philosophical it got. And then he was like, what if I write an entire DLC that's just only this guy like talking in poetry in prose for like, you know, at you for like three hours. And that then they were like, let's do Lodestone Road based on that. Well, he was and like, like for me, I, I, I really do like that. But I under at a certain point, it got laid on too thick and there was too much telling and not showing. Um, but at the same time, the ideas they were talking about were still so like, like, I, I feel like complex and serious and deep. And it was, and it was a good discussion on like, you know, what the philosophy of New Vegas is all about. So I still appreciated it, even though I, I felt like the execution was not as good as most of the rest of Fall in New Vegas were they're te- or they're showing you instead of telling. So I, I put it in S, I put it in S minus. I think it's better than, um everything else that we've said so far but it's not it's not nearly as it's, you can't put it next to old world blues like uh-huh, yeah it's just favorite. it's a s minus okay s minus um for me the thing i love about lonesome road the most is the uh, well besides the advanced riot armor that shit's fucking woo, gucci but um the thing i love about lonesome road is when you're talking to ulysses in almost every encounter um, he speaks a lot of truth, and you can tell there's conviction in his words, but the thing I really love is you can also tell that he's lying to himself on, like, a lot of different fronts, and you have dialogue that you can basically tell him that, like, oh, it sounds like you ate the robot. No, I don't. Fuck you. It's like, oh, I don't think he's telling the truth. But, like, straight up, it, I, I don't know. It's just convincing someone. It's pure fallout for me. Convincing someone down from their high ground, like just making um, a potential enemy into a friend with just ideology. I fucking love Lonesome Road for it. Plus the elite advanced and uh, riot armor, like you know, the riot gear. It's all so fucking beautiful. Oh, it's sick. Um, that's all my thought. I fucking hate the tunnelers. Not from like a gameplay, uh, like not genuinely. I just hate them because they always kick my ass. But, um, oh, I, I think the tunnelers are. I used to hate them conceptually when they introduced them, mm-hmm. but I actually think the tunnelers are a great kind of like ending to New Vegas. Like, there's all this shit going on, but ultimately, you know, the tunnelers are the end of the world. After all of the ideology and all of this rebuilding and people copying ideologies past, like, you know, at the end of the day, the tunnelers are the nukes for this new post-apocalyptic world to reset everything again. It depends on who fights him. I mean, if you have the NCR there, and you have, like, you know, the Mount Garrison, best ending, best ending for any of the factions, I think they'll stand by. As things are current before, like, before Hoover Dam, yeah, I think the Tunnelers would probably fuck shit up. But, like, post-Hoover Dam, I don't know. But I do like them conceptually. Um, I think they add a lot of neat lore. Also, I think it's funny that Old World Blues is like, you know, it could be a self-contained DLC. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to be a part of every fucking DLC. Why not? So, like, they're also in Lonesome Road with the uh, Dust Storm. Uh, Yeah, you know, I'd rank it as S2. I would put it behind Old World Blues, but I'd rank it as S. How about you, Mammoth? It's a very interesting take. Um, It is important for not the story of, in my opinion... It's not very important for the story of New Vegas, but it seems to be a important story for the story of the Courier themselves. Mm. Because you can, you, you know about the Legion, uh, NCR and Legion found the dam, they fought over it. They're fighting over water and power. Uh, Ulysses, you know, shows up, he says, Courier, the bear and the bull, the bull and the bear, bull, bear, bear, bull. And just a reminder, in all of Ulysses' dialogue, he says bear 77 times. That's insane. All right. But yeah, he says yeah. bull. He says what bull 32. So awesome. I think he's a bit obsessed with the bear. Yeah, which one he hates more. The bull is pretty bad, but have you heard about the fucking bear? I just like start the bear. About it. <laughs> Ever see someone edited a clip of The Simpsons, uh, you know, into a meme format to show it. It's yeah. <laughs> Mr. Burns picking between ketchup and catsup, and it's Ulysses picking between the. Uh, Catch uh, the bull and the bear. Uh, I'm gonna show up this one now, but it's probably the funniest fucking video. Uh, go ahead and roll the clip editor. You may be an open book, SpongeBob, but I'm a bit more complicated than that. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. 
so I'd say that uh, it is very interesting to explore, and the Town Runners do give you a future for, for future fallouts, because I don't remember who, but people in the New Vegas project don't like civilization returning, so they want a reason for civilization to be beaten back. Mm -hmm. Can't remember if that's something in that actuality or my brain finally betraying me. So, so I'd say it is, you know, let's just slap it up in this. Also, one last thing I want to mention before we move on to Fallout 4. Um, uh, have either of you guys watched Futurama? Yes. Okay, again, it has my favorite wild... I guess this spoils another video I play, but fuck it. It has my favorite wild wasteland <clears throat> uh, thing in it. It um has Seymour, Fry's dog, um, in it. It's literally just like a dog statue that's just named Seymour. It's fucking beautiful. Also, you can get the Fist of the North Rar. Which... Oh, it, I, I thought you only get that if you have Wild Wasteland. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you have Wild Wasteland, then you get to see, like, you know, Seymour, Fry's dog, as the fucking dog statue. That's already good enough. And we forgot about the best part, Eddie. Oh, Eddie dude. has a personality Eddie, now. I completely forget about Eddie. Not I only that, Eddie. You could go that all the upgrades from, and it goes back to the Eddie to the Mojave too. So you could turn your normal uh, Eddie, who if you're like me, you always have him, into a much better companion. But in the yeah, he has a personality now, and apparently has the recordings of people having sex. It's so good, yeah, dude. Like, oh my god, I just actually got done doing Lonesome Road. The dialogue, especially with Eddie, is so good, and it's so sad at the end where if you actually, you know, you you don't nuke either side, and you get to like, and Eddie has to die. It's really sad to be a hundred percent honest, but I love a brilliant it. thing to to give so that you're not completely alone in this journey of isolation yeah. to travel down this lonesome road. They give you an iPod, but you care about him. I yeah. love that guy. I'd Plus, have a beer with him. He's essential, by the way. Even if you're playing in hardcore mode, because he fucking has to uh, be essential. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you kind of need him at the end. Too many things there that could kill him in, like, five. Well, actually, it takes quite a number of hits to kill him. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah. My chum. So now we are on to Automatron. And for me, I would move that shit down to... I want to say F. But uh, I will go down to D. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I, I, now I'm gonna convince you why it should be DNR that for a very simple reason. Okay. Nuka World needs to be as low as possible. Okay, yeah. Fair point. Um, <laughs> I've already talked point. about my sharing hatred of Nuka World. Yeah. yeah. That, that was the entirety of uh, what last last uh, last time's podcast. Yeah, check out the podcast, by the way, because we... You know what? You you hate something so much in Fallout, you can have an entire episode dedicated to yeah. it. <laughs> That's fair, dude. I... I I, I don't know like it had a decent i like the concept uh, i i like yeah. the mechanic but that is all there fucking is it just introduces a new mechanic the story is ass the enemies are ass the, the entire thing is ass no matter what you say yeah. to the last like final bitch who's like controlling them all she says the same fucking thing i would not put it at f though um like i put i put mothership zeta at d i would also put um automaton at d i think f is uh like some of those special BS place in that, hell yeah there, right. there, there, there was like there was i don't remember what it was but like there were some fallout 4 dlcs that i probably just blocked from my mind because they were so insubstantial if they're not the the lesser, lower than F. yeah but yeah. uh but, yeah go ahead man i'm sorry now that i think about it automatron has a very wasted bit of opportunity because the mechanist is based on you know short uh there's one in Fallout 3, but this one's based off, off the comic books. Yeah. And you listen to the Silver Shroud radio, you find out the Mechanist was the villain in uh, in the Silver Shroud radio show. And if you play as the Silver Shroud and you you know you sneak in there, you can have it where you can convince him to stand out. You can do the whole quest as the Silver Shroud while you're fighting That's the Mechanist. So, and that's a sponge idea. That. So, Automatron could be so much better where instead of it just oh yeah you can build robots now if it was a quest where you get to oh. if you decide to continue the silver shroud you get to fight alongside wasteland quote-unquote superheroes to fight super villain the mechanist and maybe uh dr brainwash watch this on the comic if that was the dlc it'd be going up here i just want i want uh, that. Uh, yeah of <laughs> course i want to like super mutant grognak like uh yes <laughs> 
there's a there's an actual man to man and he doesn't breathe underwater. Like he has one mission, he's gonna swim down to release a valve. He just immediately drowns. Yeah, and then you're like, all right, well, uh, he forgot his rebreather. Here, take this. Go do what he's gonna. <laughs> Drown us you on could the be, case. You could treat it as being ridiculous normally, or you could dress up as the silver shroud, and you could be the silver shroud. will yeah. handle this. But no, as it is, it's D. Yeah. Mostly because if you modify Codsworth, he can't wear a bowler hat anymore. Also, the only other thing I want to clarify that I hate is near one of the ending speech checks. Even if you fail the check to ask her to take off the helmet, she still fucking does it. I don't, un I, no matter what happens, that's like, it's so stupid. Anyway, yeah. Classic D. Fallout 4 moment. All right. No secure charge option. Now yeah, we're yeah. going for far. I'm just kidding. Let's talk about the cool world. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Oh. 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 <laughs> All right. Let's talk about uh, Far Harbor <laughs> since it came, uh, since it came after Comic Con. Uh, Far Harbor or Point Lookout 2.0. Mm -hmm. Uh. It's full of hypocrites for a very simple reason. So Far Harbor is off in Maine, right? It's a little island off the coast of Maine. So that means they're still technically Mainlanders. Wait a minute. Are you doing any of oh, Elder Scrolls reference? No. <laughs> what are Mainlanders? I don't get it. Stay. I'm so stupid. The people of Far Harbor hate people from the mainland, and they call you Mainlander. But Far Harbor is an island off the coast of Maine, which means they are, in fact, Mainlanders. Ah, now joke, I son. get it. I know. I'm sorry, man. I'm Have me explain the joke, son. <laughs> yeah, I just... <laughs> I, yeah, no, look, for Far Harbor, honestly... Okay, I'm going to hear what you your guys' just... opinions are and where it should go first, because I don't want to... Well, I think Mammoth is correct in that it's very loosely, uh, but very like, out, noticeably. Yeah. Well, like, however, I do think it is an S tier because okay. it takes all of the good parts, uh, gameplay wise of Point Lookout. The fact that there's like a whole thing to explore. There are multiple different storylines going on. And this time, not only are there fun little different quest lines to do, but I think like 90% of them all link back to the main like inclusive story within Far Harbor which is probably more engaging than the actual Fallout 4 storyline <laughs> so yes. honestly like I, I feel like you could give someone Far Harbor and like don't have them play Fallout 4 and you know not accounting for like the difficulty because the enemies are scaled and all that like they might actually enjoy Far Harbor more than Fallout 4 I would put Far Harbor at high A, but I could be convinced to ask Mammoth, where are you putting it? Well, let's look at this one step at a time. So first off, it starts off as a private eye investigation story, which is wacky enough, I like it. So you bring yeah. Nick along with you and you find out, oh yeah, Nick, Nick can't remember stuff for a long time. So it sort of implies that eventually if Nick lives long enough, he's going to forget you. Bit sad, but okay. And then you go to this mysterious Fahaba. This mysterious island drenched in a radioactive fog that comes or goes. And uh, there's creatures in it, and it's a mystery, and ooh, it's scary, and it's filled with locals that don't trust you. And you know, now that I think about it, there should be a lot more Lovecraftian stuff going on up there, since this does, since a seaside village that hates outsiders and very secretive does sound like the majority of all the settings for a Lovecraft story. But that's neither here nor there. It feels, I, I will say, Far Harbor feels like Fallout 4's. It does something that Fallout 4 doesn't, and it makes the moral decisions seem a bit more complex. It does something stupid. It does give you that laser puzzle system for. Uh, I actually like it, personally. Yeah, yeah it's I know, same. but it's. It, oh, it, it does it come out of nowhere. I hate that the shit. data thing. When it, you're trying to get a, 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 a Dama's, Dama's, Dino's, Dima. Dean Domino's, Dima's, Dino's memories. Dima's memories, yeah. So you have to do this. And it uses the settlement thing, which is fine, but it, I played it when it first came out, so the bugs kept glitching yep. for me, so they wouldn't pass. I had to keep reloading. I appreciate but the it effort. Does I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to spoil it, but there's also like a legitimate twist that happens in the storyline that I think most people don't really expect. Oh yeah. 
Uh, but there are some very other interesting things. Like, you take some complaints with Fall 4, for example, there's stuff in the ocean. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You can, you can find, like, crates of stuff off the coast in the ocean. Because one of the problems with Fall 4 is there's a large part of the map that's ocean, and there's nothing in there. Mm. With Far Harbor, there is stuff in the ocean for you to find. Like, there's a container of marine armor that you can find. Yeah. There's a... Well, I mean, here's the thing. That was the main reason why I wanted to put the, uh... Well, never mind, because we can't go through that, because then I'll have to hurt my baby on the starts. Anyway, moving back on to Fear of Harbor. Um, the only two things I personally hate about it, and we'll get on all the things I love about it. Um, one, I mean, yeah, some people might argue it's not a blatant ripoff, but I'm really mad about the fucking bolt quest that, um... They took from, uh, fuck. Eh, autumn Leaves, that's it. Autumn Leaves. Um, autumn Leaves is a mod in New Vegas that basically did what Far Harbor did with the Vault, but way better. And in my opinion, there's a little too much in common with it that kind of just makes it seem like they ripped it off without, like, any credit, which, which is fine, but whatever. But moving on past that, I also hate the, uh, Dima puzzle with a passion i mean i think it's, it's when you make a mob that literally well you can't really say that people also <laughs> take away the gas from dead money and let you keep all your weapons so that's not a valid point but i really do hate the demon puzzles with a passion but the things i like about it um <clears throat> i like that you get a unique ending if you actually do all the quests at the harbor which the quests are fun in my opinion i like the quests i like the giant unique crab that's inside of a bus um, I will say that I was disappointed about the Red Dev because there's, for a while, people mm -hmm. forget there's a lot of theories about what the next Fallout DLC would be, and one of them was being, there's apparently two uh, people you can hear talk, uh, talking, just normal settlers, and they talk about Old Peg, which is apparently a giant ghoul blue whale. Oh, so when yeah. we saw, so when for a Harbor trailer release, people thought, oh, are we going to be able to hunt a blue ghoul whale? Go all on Moby Dick. Oh, I would have loved that. Cool. And then you find out it's just a crab, like a tiny crab of red eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that lowers it just for me, but that's my own fault because I got my hopes raised of actually having naval combat fighting a whale. I would have loved that. I would have loved fighting a whale. <laughs> well, I'll put it but S. No. If you guys are cool with S. Is everyone here cool with S? Yeah, I, yeah, I, was, I would put it above. Honestly, I would put it above Lonesome, but below um, uh, Old World Blues. That's my pick. You know what? Yeah, I'd say so, because Lonesome Road doesn't have me being a detective, all right? If sure. I want to go on a detective mission, I want to be a detective. I want to, you know... And I, I, I didn't know how that murder went. I was surprised. I was pleasantly surprised by how that turned out. It was nice. Also, before we start on Nuka World, I want to clarify. Let's all list all the positive things about it for judging it and casting it into hell where it belongs. Um, right, I'll... I mean, Nuka World is the the most polarizing DLC, even within itself. It has some really great things and some really poor things. Uh, Let's talk about the good things, yeah. All right, all right. I'm going to be positive right now, Cringe. I'm yeah. going to be very positive. I'm absolutely positive that I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, it. Okay, well, I'm going to list... It's there. It's right there for the taking. It's all there. The pieces are lined up. The, the game's ready, set, match. Man, if I know it's fire. <laughs> okay, fine. You want the positives? Galactic yeah. Zone is very interesting to explore. Same with the other parts of the park. Kitty Kingdom's a bit crowded, but that's the way it is. I did like... I did like the fact that the villain for Kitty Kingdom is the 200-year-old magician. Yeah. Although... I guess he has magical powers now. I think so, but to be fair, there are psychics and other things. There's so much in I, I know, but... Cthulhu. In New Vegas, there is a psychic that you can talk to a kid who has this thing on his head. Yeah. But, but there's a different... But he was a stage magician before the war, and I guess the nukes gave him magical powers because he can raise the dead and vanish. Also, how did the, the Gator Claw come to be? It was cloning gone wrong to defend the park, but it looks like a Death Claw with just a longer snout. I actually don't know the lore behind that, to be 100%. Okay, honest. so. Uh, so apparently Safari Zone had a cloning center so they could just clone animals. Rather than, you know, but the actual ones to get DNA to clone it. Mm -hmm. And after the war, one scientist survived. He became a ghoul. And he just 
Sorry, to survive there, he would clone a cow, he would eat the cow, and then we'd see the Peter Vincent clone the next day. Then he decided he wanted to re take part, take back Safari Zone from the you know, the wild animals, so he designed the Gator Claw. And then he just let the cloning machine go wild. And he escaped, he went to Cedo, and then he died. <laughs> okay. Oh, so... I mean, so, that's not too yeah. bad. I mean, it's not... I like, uh, like you said, I like the one thing that Fallout 4 did right. Let me show Fallout 4. It's a different conversation. The one thing that Nuka World did right, in my opinion, was definitely, um, like, uh, atmosphere. I liked, I would say my favorite part about Nuka World in general is probably the Wild West kind of feel you can go for. Like, go get a cowboy hack, go get a revolver, go shoot some... Fucking, oh, like, I greatly enjoy dry, uh, dry rock cold. Yeah, that one. That's probably my favorite part about. Uh, I love the game. quest. I love that you could go full hammy. It's uh, it's great. I'm the quickest draw in the West, and don't you forget it, son. I love the colorful uniforms, uh, but but you also can't do the raider quest because if you give part of the park to a raider, they ruin it by putting up their raider stuff all over that part of the park, and it just tampers with it all right mel well anything positive uh kind of like what you said where you like the atmosphere i guess more specifically um unlike the rest of fallout 4 with like only very few exceptions um fallout uh nuka world is kind of like zany the only other kind of zany stuff that fallout 4 really has is the kid in the fridge and the uh the robot ship uss constitution thing Everything else is kind of, like, taken very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, like, the Travis quest, I guess. Like, I it's, hate it's, that shit. That's not yeah. saying it's stupid. Well, okay, it's not... Well, 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 yeah, sorry. Move on. Yeah, but, but, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, most of Fallout 4 takes itself very seriously, which I don't have a problem with. You know, I like Fallout because of the fact that it takes the premise seriously. It's not like a cartoon game. Um, yeah. But the fact that Nuka World is like the one example of Fallout 4, like really letting loose, I think that's pretty cool. The problems that I have with it are, I think the, the storyline is kind of shallow, even for Fallout 4 standards, which is saying something. And also, mm -hmm. if you really want to like explore the full thing, you need to like, first of all, be very into the, uh, the building. Raiders. Yeah, yeah. You need to be very into like the settlement building, which I was. So for me, that part isn't a problem. But even for someone like me that's into the settlement building, I then need to make a couple of them raider settlements, which then derails the storyline yeah. in the main quest. Like, oh yeah, what? that's another thing. If you're like me and you and you did the DLC with the same save you did to complete the game the first time around, there are no settlements open. So you have to attack your own settlements and yeah. then four settlements you own to for work for other settlements you own. Yeah, and then the, like you derail the storyline. It's just like, who thought of that? I don't Did, know. That's yeah, actually that, that's, they, that. they could have They could have created new settlements and said, these are the raider settlements. They will raid for you elsewhere in the meantime, you know? Or they, they, they could have, and they could even do this. They could even have altered the main map to have created new locations that would be raider specific settlements like they did that in updates and patches they just didn't do that it's basically i got the idea that they had like a grand idea that they wanted to do and it was just so horribly implemented it's 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 very weird to have the gameplay go well to have the story work even if it's lackluster but then to have like a huge design flaw like that's like unknown in fallout to have such a huge design flaw like that for that, I kind of give Nuka World, uh, but the thing is, Nuka World is also, like, I don't know, man, it's it's Fallout 4. It, it, it's got more replayability inherently than, like, Operation Anchorage or The Pit for me, just because it's more fun to play. But I don't know if I'm giving credit to Fallout 4's game engine or to the DLC. I but... think mainly to the game engine, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know. That, that, that's that got to count. That's got to count at least a little bit, too, you know? I, I, I At the end of the day, I think I'd put it in the same group with the pit and Operation Anchorage, maybe like above the pit, below Operation Anchorage. It's it's very close, honestly. So, Bama, what was your decision? Because I think I'm gonna, I think I might be the tiebreaker. Ooh, the Shadow Zone. <laughs> Banish it. I cast it out. 
I would actually rank it an F, but due to all the good things we talked about, the highest I would want to go would be right behind Automatron and D. It's F, um, <laughs> destroy it. Cast it into the fire. No. Bruh. No. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Help me, Mel Melodius. I'm weak. He was Help me. me. <laughs> Cringe is trying to take over. <laughs> we should take we should take a nuka world to stand trial. It's the Jedi way. It's too dangerous to be left not alive. I mean dead. I mean alive. <laughs> it's like, kill it. I don't know. I'm the only one that can help you run the podcast. Congratulations, <laughs> useless. <laughs> Immediately seize control of Cringe's channel. Power! Oh, uh, unlimited power! <laughs> and you just see 50 subs go over to man. It's like, all right, here we go. Wait, how many subs do I have on the YouTube channel I haven't posted to in a year? I think I have one. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, let's let's all listen as I slowly crush his cringe his, uh, dreams. Uh, your channel. Yes. I have 160. Yes. I have 161. <laughs> well, we could. Uh, well, since I'm subscribed to you, I could just click to click. No, <laughs> don't do that. Anyway, that is uh, yeah, that is uh, that's where we're at with the list. Oh. Well, I think we did it. We made a list that won't be controversial in any way whatsoever at the Fallout community. Not exactly. Yeah, Honestly, if, if you listen to the whole podcast, like, I think we hit, like, every note, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'd be, I think you'd be hard-pressed to listen to the podcast. And even if you don't agree with the list that was yeah. the average of all of our opinions, I think you'd be hard-pressed to never agree with any, to, to like never agree with any of our opinions that we did because we were so different throughout the whole thing. Of course. And if you ever want me to just disagree with Melodias, you don't have to pay me. I'll just do it right now. Yeah. I mean, th th that's how we do these shows, actually. And don't yeah. forget. Uh... You're getting paid. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs>